I think this episode is going to be a little harder for me. I'm going to wing it more than I have before. I've got a little bit of notes. I've got a little bit of structure in my head. This I'm just going to kind of wing because this episode is really about healing. It's really about deep, deep healing. And we do that by becoming grateful for the anxiety, becoming grateful for the alarm because we change our neurophysiology when we become grateful. And it's not positive psychology. It's not like, oh, think happy and you'll be happy. It's really about this alarm is your younger self. This alarm is the activation of your younger self. When you split from yourself, when there was trouble in your household, when you went through trauma as a child and it wasn't resolved by your caregiver, so it's still in there. You're still holding it in there. That alarm is your conduit to that younger child that's still in you, your younger self, inner child, whatever you want to call it. It's still in you. That child is still in you. And it's finding that child and being grateful for them instead of pushing them away. Because when we feel the pain that they carry, we push them away. That's basically why it's gotten worse. Because if you push a child away, if you think of that, if a child is upset and you push them away, what's going to happen? Well, they do one of two things. They'll either shut down completely, which I think we've all been there, or they'll get very, very activated. They'll get very, very alarmed, which I've been there too. I'm sure probably you have too. So it's the combination of the alarm in our system and the shutdown that creates this angst in us, this sense of lack of grounding, this inability to soothe ourselves comes from this child that is still in us that is still alarmed. And until we find that child and show them that they are seen, heard, loved, and protected, we're always going to be anxious because we're always going to be operating from that sense of alarm that is still in that younger version of you, is still in that inner child state. And I I really hesitate using that term inner child because it sets people off. And I think one of the reasons why it bothers people is because they have an inner child that is upset. So they don't even want to deal with it. And I think that's how we become chronically anxious is that we keep pushing this child away from us and we don't allow their person to come into our environment. We grow up as adults by pushing this child away, but the alarm is still there. The pain the child holds is still there. We can shove it down. We can do what Freud calls repression. We can shove it down into our unconscious mind, but it will show up in our body and it shows up in our body as alarm. And that's what I wrote the book Anxiety Rx about because this is what happened with me. I had this alarm from growing up with a schizophrenic father and it never got dealt with. Never, really. I mean, I talked about it in therapy for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours about my dad and how he did this and how he did that and he didn't meet my needs and blah, 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 blah. Didn't do anything. It didn't, it didn't get me to a place of healing. What got me to a place of healing is realizing that child is still in me and how do I see him, hear him, love him, and protect him and show him that he's seen, heard, loved, and protected? How do I do that? And we don't do that by pushing the alarm away. We don't do that by drugging it. We don't do that by falling into our addictions. We don't do that in any other way but choosing to connect with this painful part of us. Now, this is hard. This is difficult work because when you feel alarmed, all you want to do is get out of alarm. And I'm sure that's exactly how your child felt when they felt abused, neglected, where they had to mature too early. They had to become the man or the woman of the house too soon. Like these alarms in us form because we don't have anyone to talk to. We don't have anyone to help us assuage these alarms. We have alarm because we had these childhood situations that were unfortunate, uncomfortable, painful, abusive, whatever they were, and we didn't have an outlet. So part of us is still trapped in there. And if you look at the way the the brain works, the amygdala, the amygdala has no sense of time and it remembers everything. So your amygdala remembers all your traumas. Whether or not you can consciously recollect them yourself, your amygdala remembers everything. And it's still in you. That alarm is still in you. So 
if that alarm is still in you and it's radiating up into your brain and it's creating these anxious worries, which is basically my alarm anxiety theory, that the alarm is in our body, this unresolved trauma is in our body. And the brain reads that trauma, it reads that energy in this process called interoception, and the brain makes sense of that trauma by making what-ifs, warnings, worst-case scenarios, in other words, worry. It makes up worry to make sense of this alarm in our system, and that worry forms a distraction. So in a way, when we worry, we're pushing that inner child away because we're going up into our heads, we're escaping up there, and we're not really going into our bodies. We're not really addressing that child who needs to be seen, heard, loved, and protected. We're not. When we go into our addictions, when we zombie scroll Instagram or get into shopping or porn or whatever it is, we are pushing that child away. And when I say be grateful for your alarm, it's a beacon to that younger version of yourself, that alarm in your body, because we repress the negative energy into our unconscious. And as the body is a, a representation of the unconscious mind, the body keeps the score, we can find that alarm in our body. Now, once we find that alarm in our body, can we embrace it? instead of pushing it away. And I've used this analogy before too. If you have a child that's coming up to you in a grocery store because they lost their parents, their hands are up in the air. It's like, can you pick me up? Can you soothe me? Can you comfort me? Of course, you'd probably do that. But for some reason, we don't do that for ourselves. And I think this starts very early in childhood, that futility, that sense of alarm, that sense that we're helpless and powerless. Because when we do experience alarm, abuse, loss, abandonment, rejection as children, we don't have anyone to tell and we don't have anyone to help metabolize this. So that energy stays in us. So to heal, we have to go back and find that child. And this is what I mean about being grateful for the beacon of alarm because that's the conduit to our younger self. It hurts. It's hard. I do this virtually every day in the morning when I wake up in this sense of alarm, when I wake up with alarm. I have to go in and connect with that younger version of myself. I have to put my hand over the alarm, which in me, as many of you know, is in my solar plexus. And I have to make a concerted effort to find that child in me. See if I can find his eyes. See if I can really connect with him and his pain. This hurts. This is not easy. But this is really the final stage in your healing is to be able to connect with that child in you that is still in pain. They're still in alarm and showing them that they're seen, heard, and loved. And when you show them that, when you give them the attention now that they so badly needed back then, you can start to heal that alarm. When you heal the alarm, you're actually healing the engine, the basis of where your anxiety starts because anxiety isn't just the thoughts of your mind. Thoughts of your mind make it worse, absolutely. But the thoughts of your mind aren't the cause of anxiety. The cause of anxiety is this typically childhood wounding pain alarm that's still stored in your system that is still being automatically read by the mind and it has to make up a story, especially the left hemisphere. It's got to make up a story for why this hurts so much. So it will take your present day situation and it will tell you that you're really afraid that your relationship is going to break up or you're really afraid that your child's going to get hurt. And those are all valid concerns, but they're really not at the heart of it. The heart of it is this child in you that's hurting and they have this sense of alarm in their system. And that's what we have to get at. So if you push that alarm away, if you're not grateful for it, if you resent it, if you resist it, a few episodes on the podcast before, it was all about resistance. If we resist that alarm, we keep ourselves in a state of limbo where we never can heal from anxiety and alarm because we've pushed it away. You got to feel it to heal it. You got to allow that alarm to come up. And if you can treat that alarm with compassion, with love, with acceptance, with the ability to just be with it, just be with that alarm. You don't have to specifically do anything about it, at least initially but just being with it, just showing that alarm that you are going to give 
it the attention now that it so badly needed when the original trauma occurred. Because there is this theory that says if you get traumatized as a child, part of you stays locked at that age for the rest of your life. And I believe it's true. So what we have to do is find that locked in child and show them that they're not there anymore, that they're not locked into this particular situation anymore because the amygdala has no sense of time. So the child really does feel like they are back in that situation again. I am back in that you know, 11-year-old state where I'm watching them take my dad away into the ambulance to take him for a stint in the mental hospital. I go back there. My body feels that way. And I believe there's a place in our brain called the insula. Well, I know there's a place called, in our brain called the insula. And I think it, it mediates a lot of emotion. And I think it also mediates how we feel in our body. So I think when I get alarmed now, I feel exactly the same way I did when I was watching them load my dad into the ambulance when I was 11 years old. My body feels the exact same way. So when my body feels the same way, my mind will also pick up those same thoughts that I had back then. Today, they may not show up in the same way, but they will show up as worries. They will show up as anxiety. So when I'm grateful for this, I changed my neurophysiology. I'm now in control of the situation rather than just automatically falling into this default loop of alarm running my life, which it used to for many, many years. As soon as I got alarmed, all bets were off. There was no saving me at that point because I was just a victim. Like that's what alarm does to you over the course of time. It turns you into a victim. And when you are a victim, your brain supports that victim mentality. So it creates epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol. It creates these stress chemicals that, of course, make you feel more stressed. And on top of that, it paralyzes the rational part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, to the point where you can't rationally move yourself out of worry because the rational part of your brain is shut off. So not only do you make more worries when you're in this alarmed state, but the part of your brain that would tell you that these worries are unfounded, they're unlikely to happen, has been paralyzed. So you make more worries and you believe them. They have more salience. They have more depth to them because the part of your brain that would tell you these aren't real is offline. So when we connect with the alarm, we are actually connecting with the younger, wounded version of ourselves. And we start to show that younger version of ourselves that they're okay. They aren't actually back there. They're not back there anymore. And I will say that when I'm connecting to my younger self, like you never have to go back there again. You're here with me. You're here with me. You never ever have to go back into that place again because he doesn't know that. The younger version of myself who's locked in that, that scene doesn't know that we have gotten older. It doesn't know that we've accomplished all these things. He is still stuck back there. So when you are grateful for this conduit, for this feeling, even though it hurts, even though it hurts, even though it's painful, when you are grateful for it, when you embrace this pain, when you embrace this alarm, you set the structure to be different. Rather than defaulting back into this victim mentality, default mode of, I'm on my heels, I'm afraid, I'm in this survival physiology I can't get out of, when you start being grateful for the alarm, all sorts of things open up that never opened up before because chances are before when you got alarmed, you would just follow this same railroad all the way down to its end, which was usually not good, which was usually just more anxiety, more and more and more anxiety. But once you start changing that attitude, and again, this isn't all positive psychology. This is basically making a connection with the younger version of you inside of you that still at the age that they experienced the trauma and they're still hurting. This is what you're doing, but it hurts. It's uncomfortable. It's painful. Finding it in your body. For me, like I said, it's in my solar plexus. Where is your alarm? Your alarm is your younger self. When you find it, it maybe in your throat, it might be in your chest, it might be in your heart, it might be in your gut, but that's your younger self asking for your attention. So give it that attention. Give it that that love and attention, and, and be grateful for this signal that is coming to you, this alarm, because that is the conduit. That's the channel to that, that younger version of you that's hurt. 
if we just had this free floating, you know, sense of emotional pain, we'd never be able to heal it because we don't have any direction towards it. We have to be able to find it. And that's why I'm grateful for finding the alarm in my body. And I get everybody that I work with to find the alarm in your body. And I'll be releasing more stuff about that soon to help you do that. But it's finding the alarm in your body because that alarm is your younger self. That alarm that you find in your, in your chest, in your solar plexus, in your throat, that is your younger self asking for your love and attention and your gratitude. Because I'll tell you, that child in you that you've been pushing away because you judge them, abandon them, blame and shame them for whatever you judging, abandoning, blaming and shaming them for has the best parts of you. That child carries the best parts of you. So when you reject that child, you're rejecting all their wonderful parts as well. And it's understandable why we reject the child when we're younger. You know, if you're, if you were bullied, if you were bullied, part of you, when you're that age, when you're eight years old, agrees with the bullies. It's like, well, maybe I am ugly. You know, maybe there is something wrong with me. So we split. There's the part of us that's authentic and ethereal and real who knows that we're perfect. You know, it sounds a little woo, but the consciousness part of us knows that we're perfect. And then the part of our lives come in there and we might get bullied, we might be abused. There's all these things that come in and make us reactive. Instead of being our, forming into our authentic selves without a lot of trauma in our lives, when we have parents that are, are can see us, hear us, love us, and protect us, we can go through these traumas. But if our parents are off doing their own thing because they've had their own trauma and we're left alone, that child is traumatized in you. And until you find that child and bring them, up to this, bring them into the present moment, show them they never have to go back there again, and you're very grateful for them because they will show up as pain. They will show up as alarm initially. And then after you metabolize that alarm for a while, you start seeing the child. You start seeing that that child carries the best parts of you. Like the very best parts of me are in that sensitive boy that I judged, abandoned, blamed, and shamed for so long. And it doesn't happen overnight. But it is one of those things that once you start on that track to being grateful for the alarm, being grateful for that conduit, being grateful for that place that you can find that younger version of yourself because you can heal that. And when you're grateful for it, you get into the place of agency. You're in control of it rather than it being in control of you, even though it hurts, even though it hurts. But you are now in a different framework, a different relationship with that alarm when you're grateful for it. Before, with me, the alarm would take me over, I would become a victim and I would just collapse into that. And I would just go through my day as best I could and make it through that day. And I'd get back home. It's like, oh, that was a really anxious day. That was terrible. And now it's like when I, when I feel the alarm, it's an opportunity for me to connect with that younger version of myself. And it really does get at the root cause of why I am quote unquote anxious in the first place. Because anxiety is not in your mind. Anxiety is this alarm state that's in your body, that's locked in there at the age that you were traumatized as a child. Not that everything is childhood trauma, but I'll tell you, everybody I see who with chronic anxiety, it's from some kind of childhood trauma. So it's really finding that child, being grateful for the alarm, because when you're grateful for the alarm, you're grateful for the child. And when that child feels gratitude towards it, it starts coming out of its shell, its protective shell. And then you become whole. You know, the definition of, of integration is taking disparate parts and then bringing them into a functional whole. So when we take these disparate parts, it's parts that was bullied or this part that had a father who wasn't there for them or a mother who was abusive. When we take these disparate parts, we find that child in us. We show them they're seen, heard, loved, and protected. We bring them back into belonging with us. We stop judging, abandoning, blaming, and shaming them and start having gratitude for them, having a connection with them. That's when we start to heal. That's been greater than any psychotherapy, EMDR, CBT, psychedelics even. Like That has been 
what's actually allowed me to heal is connecting with that wounded younger child that shows up in me as alarm in my solar plexus. That's what allowed me to heal. That's what's really allowed me and, and to continue to heal and to really appreciate that child in me that carries the very best parts of me, but he also carries my pain and that's okay. So here's what you do. When you feel anxious, or what I call alarmed, search for it in your body. Find it in your body. As I said, I'll be creating more material about this over the next few months, but see if you can find that sense of like burning or pressure or pain in your body when you feel anxious. Instead of going into your worried mind, start going into your body and see where you feel that. And if you can localize it, you can find it in your solar plexus or your belly or your throat. Put your hand over it. Connect with it. See if you can find that younger version of you. See if you can find their eyes. See if you can look back and find your eight-year-old self or five-year-old self or whatever. See if you can find them and connect with them. It may hurt. It probably will hurt. But this is how we heal. This is exactly how we heal. We find the alarm. We use that as a beacon to our younger wounded self. We bring that self back into belonging. And when we bring that self back into belonging, the alarm resolves. And when the alarm resolves, it takes the anxiety with it. So I'll see you next time.